Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome aboard the Sunset Safari right here on Safari Live. Remember, this is live and you are indeed looking at an elephant that are walking in front of us in Africa at this very moment. That's the beauty of it. And my name is Chris Erasmus and operating our camera behind me today is Panda Glitz. And our plan is to find elephants. And well, <laughs> it seems like we have a good start. Well, let's take a look at this elephant before it disappears. So we are at Eco Training Pridelands currently, which is one of our locations. And uh, it is right close to a town called Hootspret. It's not the same elephant we were following, actually. Um, that elephant has continued to move and joined up with a small breeding herd of elephants. What is a breeding herd of elephants? You'll hear us use that term very often. And uh, a breeding herd of elephants is basically the, the most common sort of form of a herd. It's a group of related elephant cows or females and their offspring. That's what we refer to as a breeding herd, as opposed to a bachelor herd, which is a group of only elephant bulls, elephant males. So if you hear us talk about breeding herds or bachelor herds, that is indeed what it is. Yeah, so they have arrived, indeed arrived, and we are in the hot seat here. They're right next to us. Okay, so I want to just keep quiet a little bit. Let's just listen to the sounds of them drinking. It's quite a soothing sound. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome. So good to have you with us this afternoon on the Sunset Safari. And we've started off with a nice group of elephants here having a jolly time. Let's take a look at this. And uh, this elephant bull wasn't in must or anything. He was, he was quite fine. Uh, he was in the bush, 90 degrees to us. And then he just suddenly started walking towards my it was Land Cruiser at that time. And I guess in the vehicle. And... You know, you can't do anything. If you try and reverse, you know, he's going to get a fright. So you, you just let him come. So he came and he stopped right here by my door. His tusk was literally just above my head. And uh, he actually uh, put his trunk on my lap for just a brief moment. And I just continued looking forward. I didn't want to look at this elephant. I was, I was really like, you know, I'm not going to say petrified, but I was very like feeling out of place over there. And uh, when that had all finished, because he turned around and went back into the bush, and then when that had all finished, I said to my guests, okay, we're going to stop for a sundowner drink. Not because I needed a Coca-Cola or anything like that. It was because I needed to go behind the bush and just sort of reminisce on what just happened. You know, as guides, we don't want that to happen. But in some situations, uh, you know, it, it, it might, it can happen. And I felt like a small little peanut, really. And that's why I often say nature every now and then will put you in your place. What a view this is of all this dust bathing. The first thing Paul said to me was, wow, this sand is so red. And that's exactly what it is. Mac, they are turning red in the dust indeed. So all the soil that you're seeing out here is what we call aeolian soil. It's just a fancy word for saying that it's soil that's in an area that has migrated naturally to that area. So... All this red soil that you're seeing, the red soil in the Kalahari and some of the red soil in Botswana, that is all called Aeolian soil. And it, <laughs> look at these guys just running off there. <laughs> um, yeah, and it actually originates from the Sahara Desert, blown in particle by particle over millions of years. Look at this. Isn't this just beautiful? You might just see some impalas further behind. Look at this. Isn't this just great? We had one or two of the females coming right up to the vehicle now and lying right next to the vehicle. So, as you can see, there's the seat and uh, 
Yeah. Oh, we're all picking up the heads, one or two of them, sniffing the air. Hopefully not sniffing bee cattle myself. But you can just see how these old two older females just working out what's happening. But she'll be right next to the vehicle. Oh, let's see this one where this is. They hear something. Hmm, they hear something there. I don't know what they picked up on, so you can just see the two older females getting up. They're the ones that's going to plan to start moving. And you're going to see the rest. Oh, the rest is just going to follow. Yep, there they all go. Mm. So I do apologize about the vehicle. But it's amazing how quickly things work, pan out. Amazing how quickly things just change up. Now you've got the younger males left behind, one of them, and then of course Mohawk. There's Mohawk, the dominant boy, a boy. So he's following suit. Still They're all moving straight in. We just located this leopard here. We're not sure yet because it's really under the tree. It could be um, Turtle Spaniel, it could be Shidulu. This is more or less this is where we have quite a track so far female leopard that we track, we love to track into the area and and it uh, looks like they cross into um, the west. So it could happen that turtle span is down here. You never know, but it's right time. Look like the hyenas on the ground. They just arrived now and the leopard getting up at the same time. So it could be a leopard wants to get up and move. But the, the look of the thing, the vehicle that been here since like uh, early in the morning, look like, uh, of course, there was sighting going here and it's more the era that I've signed five she do you might find that she do have made a kill and this uh, male leopard by the look of the thing sometimes you know she do does have that uh, general appearance as a maleish sort of a leopard we managed to find them they're just waiting at the moment because the tree itself providing a little bit of a half you can see they've been active in the course of a day in a very hot day you'll find these guys moving hunting and try to be successful we're expecting if it is a female here that might she might be pregnant not so long on like next month next week too they might uh, delivering the youngster and they will be very selective areas it's not all the area that they can give birth the last area with all the competition of hyenas they will pick that area and able to suck it down it's such amazing amazing to see the puppies and actually how the whole pack get involved when it comes to protocol care or feeding of a youngster i would like to say thank you everybody that joined us in the afternoon right for all questions and comments of course it really make us more excited and feel we have people there in our background of course this is nice nice to do it i will be looking forward for the morning here at the same time around half past six will be live at uh, safari life with juma and the other part of the area where we do have game drive i'd like to say cheers thank you from myself owen and rexon